there and welcome back to another video. So today is a very, very exciting video because today I can finally show you my houses, the three houses that are built for The Sims 4 Cottage Living, the actual official lots. If you didn't see the announcement a few weeks ago, I was lucky enough to be given the opportunity to build three houses to be included to ship with the new Sims 4 Cottage Living expansion pack. There is so much to tell you about these builds and I can't wait to tell you all about the process in just a few seconds, but firstly just a couple of disclaimers. This video is presented by EA Game Changers and the footage that you you're seeing here the software is not final so just keep that in mind things may change by the time the pack actually comes out you're actually seeing footage here from March which is a very early version of the game um, and then I just had access this week to another version of the game to sort of get that little video intro you saw and um, but again that isn't final so just keep that in mind with all these three videos you're gonna see um, and yeah so this is the 50 by 40 country home and this is placed in the town of Old New Henford so this has three bedrooms and three bathrooms and it came in at around 90,000 simoleons. Um, so that is not very expensive at all. And that's because I had a lot of restrictions to follow to make sure that this house can be played on any type of computer. Um, so the minimum specs for The Sims 4, uh, which meant that the houses inside aren't that full of furniture that they usually would. So when we come on to my second video and my third video, which is of my starter homes, um, you know, definitely keep that in mind that they are very simple inside, but it's for a very important reason. Um, I may do a little video of going over each of my houses and sort of like renovating them with all the other packs once we actually get the game in a few weeks. Um, so let me know if you'd like to see that. But yeah, so this also has two lot traits, homey and natural light. So those are the details about the build. Um, so I'm just going to sort of walk you through the process of building this home. Um, but just before I do that, like I said, there are two other homes which I'll be showing in another video. And also as well, there are some other amazing simmers that I worked with during this process, which is Devon Bumpkin, Hey Harry and Claire Siobhan. So they also created builds as well for this. So make sure you go ahead and check out their channels um, as it was really great to also see how their builds changed over time as well because like I said, we we'll started this in March and then had regular check-in meetings to sort of show everybody's lots, what we're done and get feedback on them. Um, so also it was really great to see their lots and seeing their finished products as well in this game when I've had a look around, um, it's really great to see those as well. So there's a lot of different content going to be coming out today so make sure you go ahead and check those all out. So like I said, this is a country home. Um, this is also an unoccupied country home. Um, there are some of the simmers included that are doing homes for specific families. I chose my three homes to be ones that aren't community lots <laughs> and also that they didn't have any sims with them. As you know, my regular speed builds, I do quite like to make neutral homes that you can take any type of family and then put them into my build. And since this was like a very special opportunity, I wanted to sort of go along with that where you can just have this game and take any type of family you want and use one of my builds with it. So we were lucky enough to actually choose which lots we wanted to do. Um, so that's the kind of things I asked for. And these are the lots that I got given. So if you don't know, this world is based off the Cotswolds in England. And also, if you didn't realize, it's all British simmers that are doing the builds for this game. So this particular one is in the countryside neighborhood of the world. And the sort of brief description I had about this particular lot before I started building was for it to be a sizable home for somebody um, that also has plenty of land for them to use and for it to be not a start at home uh, but like an upgrade from that as well. I was also given some suggested numbers for the bathroom and bedroom count and um, so it was originally three bedrooms and one bathroom um, but I kind of went away from that a little bit and ended up doing three bedrooms and three bathrooms but you know the sims team I showed them that and they were fine with it and um, so it's a little bit bigger than what it was originally planned to be and um, but as you know I do like to build big homes in The Sims 4 so um, you know that's kind of what I did here as well. Um, so you will see like a big patch of dirt <laughs> at the back of the lot and um, that's just for the animal pen but as I said this is a very early version of the game. Uh, you're seeing here footage from March uh, like the second week of March I think it was um, so that item hadn't been developed yet so I knew I wanted to place it there and I knew it was 10 by 10 so I just kind of marked out that space to come back to later and put that in. So the main sort of change, as you'll see as the build goes on, is that it gets slightly less modern. Um, I had like a tendency in the beginning to like just do too many modern style things. Um, so there's quite a few like 
bump outs on the build with like a different colored wallpaper and when you look at it it does have a bit more modern feel to it which is um you know wanting to go in the more traditional way with this world um so those were kind of changes i was making as i went on and um, as i said we did have weekly not weekly, almost weekly, um, meetings with the Sims team to kind of go over that, what we've done that week, and then we'll get like a, a document with sort of annotating different areas which we could think about changing or um, adjusting. I did really want to make like a little greenhouse, um, and I knew when I was building this that it would be kind of a challenge because I feel like greenhouses, because of all the glass, it does have quite a modern feel to it. Um, so you would have saw like earlier on in the footage, I was making like a little greenhouse building on the right hand side of the lot, um, but I, we did end up removing that um, just because it was way too modern and I knew that was going to be the case but I couldn't really figure out how to do a traditional looking um, you know greenhouse just using base game and cottage living so in the end I just sort of made like a garden plot using the new actual garden plot items um, and it still looks really great in the end and you know this is like a very basic home as all of the builds I'm doing will be because of the restrictions like I said earlier so you know as you get this build you can add on to it and things like that to make it more personalized and you know this is just using base game and cottage living so there are like other items from different packs that would work really well with this pack as well um, and that's why I'm really looking forward to do like the little renovation video of kind of bumping it up with a few other packs now that I'm not in the EA restrictions anymore and there was a lot of different restrictions to follow and lots of different like little tips to make your builds better and um, for kind of shipping with the actual game and um, and it makes a lot of sense when you kind of read it through and sort of you know think like of course this has to happen um, for keeping it so it can be used on any type of computer and when we did the kind of final handing of the builds um, which when was that again I can't exactly remember I think it was like early May and then the Sims team sort of did an optimization pass on the builds and there's sort of certain things that sort of count and things that don't um, depending on what type of object they are to the overall sort of performance count um, it's kind of difficult to explain actually but um, yeah so I did have the opportunity before I did my final hand in to sort of do my own optimization pass and um, that basically just meant going in before I finally handed it in and taking out things that because I knew that my build was I think everybody's builds were pretty much over the optimization sort of performance percentage and um, so I knew things were going to be taken out but the sims team like I said we could actually go through and do our own optimization pass um, and also we could sort of give the sims team pointers on like could you please like leave this alone I really love how this turned out could you like optimize other areas and um, so that was really great but actually let's see how my final builds will look and um, they actually look pretty similar like I couldn't really tell many things that had changed like maybe just very slight little objects that aren't really that noticeable but for the most part um everything turned out pretty much the same as how I left it which is really great and um I knew the sims team were going to look after them um because one thing as well is that I had a lot of plants in this build and actually pretty much all my builds that I've done um did have a lot of plants in and the challenge was and I'll talk about this a lot more in this two start at home videos is that the sims team really loved seeing all the plans because it really goes well with the theme but as you know in the sims 4 plans are very expensive but we were able to reduce the price of the plants a lot and we did quite a few passes of that and um, so the plants are a lot more cheaper so i could use them in my builds so that is a very nice thing to know but anyway this room right here is the master bedroom and this is most definitely my favorite room in any of the three builds i've done when i did the final hand in and i was saying before like the sims team might have to change things but we could tell them things that you want possibly left alone um, and that was one of the rooms that I said could you just leave alone because I loved how that turned out and um, it has like a yellow color scheme uh, but there's a lot of nice items that worked really well with it so it's like the base game uh, picture with the yellow flower on it and then there was also some new chairs from the pack with a yellow color swatch along with a new bedding so it worked out really well doing a nice yellow color scheme in the build and it also incorporated a nice bit of color into the build in general as well and then literally like a few days before I handed my build in, the actual bed frame was black um, and I thought that white would work really well. So I asked the art team if they would be able to change that black colour swatch to white. Um, I think they added both in actually and I felt like it worked out much better and it looks a lot nicer. Um, so I love how that one turned out. That is definitely one of my favourite rooms. It's very spacious as well. This home is definitely very spacious. All the rooms have a lot of space in them. One thing I did notice actually when I think about space is that the coffee table was taken out of the living room. And um, again, that would have been an optimization. So you can add that back in. But yeah, there's just a lot of 
spacious areas in this build which I think is really nice because it's quite a big lot and um, I also really love how this build sort of just has distinct areas for everything so like outside you've got a certain section for that kind of garden plot there then you've got a section with the garden planters and then you've also got the animal pen in the back corner and then the um you got your backyard area too for like the actual family living here so it's all you know very nicely organized um which was one of the things the sims team said um, and i quite liked how that looks i think it will make it easy to play in um so also as well ponds as well as you would have heard ponds is a new tool with the pack it was really hard to like know all these things months ago and like pretend i had no idea and we'll be getting on that shortly and that's one area of the video i didn't cut out um because it was a new exciting feature i let you see the full kind of process of how you actually do it uh, which we're just about to start here so i was just clearing some space as i didn't actually have the pond tool when we first got the game it was a later a feature that was uh, put in so I'm basically just clearing out some space I put a fountain there instead because I knew ponds were coming from the start and um, but just kind of made a little space for it to go in later once we get that feature so it kind of works in combination with the terrain tools so all you have to do is sort of make a dip with the terrain tool down and then you switch to the pond tool and just keep clicking and the water level kind of goes up and you just keep doing that until you get to your desired uh, water level and it basically just works like that it's really easy and i'm really looking forward to see what people come up with with this tool because you know as i said there's a lot of restrictions with this build so i can only do like a certain size and a certain shape and um, to not make the performance go up too much on the build itself and um, so it was kept very simple but you know i'm sure there's a lot of amazing things people are going to do and i can't wait to see all that so we're much later on in the process now um i'm kind of just doing some more final touches as you can see everything is sort of done and it's basically just going back through and making slight adjustments here and there um, so as you would have saw there, I was just adjusting the train paint. Um, that changed a little bit, you know, over time. Um, and that particular corner was basically just one of the last corners left that wasn't smooth. Um, because if you would have seen like, at the very start of the video, the back yard area was actually like paved with tiles and um, but that then changed to terrain paint and then it kind of smoothed out a bit more um, and kind of just looked a lot more natural um, and a lot more plants added as well. Another thing was this kitchen. Uh, this was originally like white and cream, um, but then it changed to yellow, which was really interesting. Uh, this was actually a suggestion by the Sims team because um, that color hadn't been used in one of the houses yet. And um, I thought it'd be a really nice change to add a bit more color into this build, um, as that was something that I kind of did over time. Um, as you know, I do quite like to do a lot of neutral builds, um, and you'll see that, you know, as I went on in my other builds as well. Um, but to kind of go neutral with keeping it unoccupied not really having a specific tiny type of family but just sort of like incorporating color here and there to make it a little bit more lively and um, so that's what i did there is a lot of outdoor lighting in this build as well uh, those like lampo style ones i did actually take out because they felt a bit more like village style than like in the country and um, so i took those out but there are a lot of footlights like around the uh, garden areas which i think looks really nice at night time um, so yeah, we're just going back through the build now. This is like at the very end and as you can see I'm just going around trying to find more ways I can incorporate some color here and there um, And I think I really liked how this turned out in the end because as you know I have that sort of just general sort of thing that builds I've made them very neutral But I still think this build looks really great for any type of family But I've included a lot more color in them um, and I'm really happy how that turned out And as you can see we're just making some slight more changes to the layout and um, just where the door placement was there uh, Things you're not going to notice that much, but you know I wanted to make sure that it was perfect like before I handed in this build I went back through so many times literally just going over the same thing over and over again um, just to make sure like I hadn't like accidentally placed like train paint where I shouldn't be or like an item isn't where it's supposed to be also another thing as well no move objects when I was talking about restrictions before we couldn't use move objects of course and also no alt placement on the items as well which I thought would make the landscaping kind of difficult but it wasn't too much of a challenge I didn't find it too difficult to do landscaping without like all placement or anything it did get a bit fiddly here and there but I thought it was alright and I've actually done a few builds like since I've done this and I've noticed like how I wasn't really going for those cheats anymore in my actual normal builds of course I couldn't say that in those speed builds but I noticed I was doing that a few times and um, also F5 placement you know it's like the quarter tile we could do that as well which helped um, in some areas but yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. I'm going to leave you here with the screenshots. I really hope you like this home. Uh, this one took a lot of work and many, many hours of 
changing things up and I'm really happy how it turned out and very proud to have it in the game and once again thank you so much to EA for giving me this opportunity. Like I said, I have done two of the homes, two starter homes, which is in the forest and in the village. Those will be coming up next, so make sure you stay tuned for those to learn about the process of making them builds as well. And make sure you leave a like, share and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!